The title of this lesson is Free Body Diagrams, and we're going to spend most of the lesson looking at that. And I'm going to give you the one-size-fits-all template equation that you're going to have to adapt for everything. I don't know if you recall, at the beginning of this unit I said, one of the reasons kids find this unit a bit tougher is, unlike kinematics where I could say, here's four equations, they'll work for everything, figure it out. There's like a bajillion equations. Every situation is going to be different. I can't come up with every equation. You'd have a binder instead of a formula sheet. I'm not going to do that. Instead, Ryan, I'm going to give you a way to derive every equation from scratch using kind of a template. And that's the theme of today and tomorrow and the next day. But first, even just with Newton's laws, we can already do some stuff. Uh, F equals what what? Okay. A spacecraft has mass of 3.25 times 10 to the fourth kilograms. Its engine can exert a thrust force of that. All right. Sean, what does A want me to find? Acceleration, so I'm going to do my usual A equals, but I'm going to be a bit lazier now. Previous years, we uh, previous year, previous units, we listed everything. I'm going to say, I still encourage you to write down what they're asking you to find with a question mark, because you feel better, it's no longer blank, but I'm not necessarily going to make a list unless I'm totally lost. What are they asking me to find? Do you see a VI, VF, anything like that, that the question, okay. Any thoughts on which equation I'm going to use to find A? F equals what what? Get the A by itself. We'll call that Sean's theorem. We'll name it after you. Okay. Um, I should point out, if you go to university and you're taking an upper level physics course and you say to the prof, I'm going to use Sean's theorem, they won't know what you're talking about. So we'll call it that here, but you won't find that in any textbook. Uh, Sean, what's the force? What are the units for force? Sir Isaac Newton's. Uh, so which of the, what's the force? They gave it to you. Yeah, this is why I said I'm going to be a bit lazier. I'm not going to list things out. I think we're at a stage now where we can pull stuff right from the question without rewriting it. If you still feel like you want to make the list, go ahead. I'm fine with that. But I'm going to go straight to 7.25 times 10 to the 4. Sean, what's the mass? All right, get your calculators out, folks. Uh, 7 point, point 0.25, scientific notation button 4, divided by 3.25, scientific notation button 4. Uh, probably the 10 to the fourths cancel, but just to remind yourself where your scientific notation button is, it might be worth practicing typing it in. Sean, what would you get? And change, yeah, 2.230, but that, okay. Units, it's an acceleration. Units, it's an acceleration. Meters per second, okay, squared. Is that big? How big is 1G in meters per second squared exactly as a number? 9.8, this is about a quarter of a G. Um, if you were on the spaceship, you would feel it enough in that you probably have to shift your weight just to keep your balance a bit, but then you'd ignore it. Kind of like when you're standing on a bus, right when the bus starts, you shift your weight, you grab something, but it's not like you're having to concentrate with all your might to keep your balance. You can carry on your conversation. Okay? Okay. B. Carter, what's B want me to find? Okay, I did this. I wrote VF. Uh, what's creeping me out? Do you see it? Ugh, I, I crossed this out right away. Can someone go 45 times 60? Okay, so I went 2,700 seconds. I fixed that. All right, how am I going to find VF? Carter, my friend. Uh, 
And by the way, here's my point. Because an A appeared in kinematics, in VF equals VI plus AT, and D equals VIT plus a half AT squared, and VF squared equals VI squared two AD, all of that is totally still fair game as far as I'm concerned. I will have no problem putting questions that involve that on a test, although probably I'll combine it with F equals what what? MA as well. Uh, which equation, Carter? What's that 2700? Okay, what's that 5.6 times 10 to the third? So if I'm in an equation with a VF, a yeah, and I'm going to have to use my answer from part A. And I think I said to you last unit, we're at the stage now where I have no problem doing that. You've learned enough physics where I can use an answer to find an answer. So it's going to be 5.6 times 10 to the third plus 2.23 times 2700. Now, I went when I went 45 times 60 to get the 2700, I lost my answer button. So I'm going to use the 2.23 if you use your answer button. If you kept it on there, that's fine. But I don't have my answer button going anymore. So 5.6 scientific notation button 3 plus 2.23 times 2700 and I got a final speed of uh, 11621 if you used your answer button there's probably more decimals than that but I couldn't do that is that right yep so I'm gonna go 11,600 meters per second is that fast that's 11.6 kilometers a second is that impossible fast? No, we've, we've got humans to that speed in spaceships before. Okay, uh, You'll learn in physics 12, escape velocity from the Earth is about 11.1 .1 kilometers per second. To get to the moon, we had to achieve faster than escape velocity. So we've had astronauts faster than this. Not significantly, probably 13,000 meters per second, but we've done it. Okay. Excuse me, as I cough. Derek, what's um, C asking me to find? Which equation? D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. How else could I find distance? What else would work? D equals bracket VI plus VF times T over two. What else would work? VF squared equals VI. I, I got a bunch of options. I would probably go with Derek's first suggestion because the D is by itself and no brackets, which on my calculator makes it slightly easier to type. So I'm going to go with that one. D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. It's going to be 5.6 times 10 to the third. 2700. Oh, Derek, I crossed out that 45 and replaced it with the 2700 seconds again plus 0.5 times a 2.23 I almost put a negative 9.8 no 2.23 2700 squared I think we're probably gonna get a fairly big answer because we're moving pretty fast per second and we're traveling for a fair number of seconds 45 minutes I got 23, 24, 83, 50. Yeah? I'm going to write it in scientific notation because it's a big number. 2.32 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 2.32 times 10 to the 7th meters. If I divide by a thousand, so twenty-three thousand kilometers. Fair bit of distance, but not crazy. Okay. 
What will the velocity d? What will the velocity of the spacecraft be after 90 uh, minutes or 60 days or four years? Noah, what's the answer, my friend? Too slow. Brendan, what's the answer, my friend? Too slow. Callie, what's the answer, my friend? No, it's not zero. Yes, we shut off the engine. Does that mean we come to a stop? How do Newton's laws work, my angel? If we shut off the engine, what's going to happen? Newton's first is going to kick in, and in outer space especially, we're not going to come to a stop. What's our velocity? We did shut off the engine. I made sure I underlined that in part B. What will our velocity be after 90 minutes or 60 days or four years? As a number exactly, more specific. 11,600. And this is the beauty of space travel. Once you get to the speed that you want, you can coast your way across the rest of the universe, assuming you don't run into any other gravitational fields, planets, and things like that. But, okay. The tricky part with rocket travel is not getting to the destination. The tricky part is getting away from the Earth's gravity well. If we use Albert Einstein's analogy of the rubber sheet and Earth creating a pit that you had to climb out of. Um, we can barely do it. If Earth was about 10% larger, then no chemical reaction whatsoever would be enough to escape Earth's gravity because the most energy we can get is governed by Einstein's E equals mc squared equation. If Earth was about 10% larger, our gravitational field would be strong enough that even E equals mc squared isn't enough energy to get out. Which means, Adam, it's possible there is intelligent life out there in the universe that evolved on planets slightly larger than ours. They'll never be able to have a space program, no matter how much technology they develop, because they'll never be able to get enough energy to leave their gravity well, even if they could get 100% efficiency of E equals MC squared. It still wouldn't be enough. Food for thought, but there may be intelligent life out there that just never gets to space. We're barely... Uh, I think right now, most of our rockets, I think only 1% is payload. The other 99% of the mass is fuel and, and, and structure. Which is just barely enough to get stuff up there. That's nerd trivia. And that's not today's lesson. That was just to review Newton's laws, Newton's first, and F equals what, what, MA. Here's today's lesson, free body diagrams. A free body diagram is a picture that represents the object that you're analyzing with a little dot. Any forces acting on that object are represented with arrows roughly to scale. What do I mean by roughly to scale? If you happen to know that two forces are the same size, draw the arrows roughly the same size. If you happen to know that one force is larger than another one, draw that arrow obviously larger than the other one. Roughly to scale. We'll use Newton's laws, Newton's first and Newton's third, to figure out what forces are acting on the object. Example two says, free body diagrams for four situations are shown below, and I've told you the net force for each situation. But we're missing some of the magnitudes of the individual forces. See if we can figure them out. Let me show you what I mean. Let's look at the first diagram here. Adam, what's the net force in the first diagram here? It says F net equals. If F net equals zero, what that really means is forces must be, I'm looking for a word that starts letter B, balanced. Okay, how big must force A be exactly in Newtons then? Has to be 50. Otherwise, you'd have an unbalanced force horizontally. How big must force B be exactly? It has to be. How could this object be moving? If it was at rest, it would stay at rest. Or it could be moving like an outer space in a straight line at a steady speed. I don't know. Brennan, what's the net force in the next diagram? Magnitude and direction. What's, first of all, what's the net force? Magnitude and direction. And direction. Okay, so what I was really saying, maybe I should have been more obvious. Dude, can you read me this line right here? Okay, 900 newtons up. So how big must C be if there's a force of 200 newtons down? What must C be so that I have a net force of 900 newtons up? That's what you were jumping to the punchline, yeah. Yes? 
Ryan, what's the net force in part in the next one? Magnitude and direction. Psst, Ryan, what's the net force, magnitude and direction? Okay, how big must D be? Don't write this down. Is that correct? Would that give you 60 left? What would that give you? Okay, so Ryan, if you hold up your hand, the one that makes the letter L, that's your left hand, okay? How big must D be? Care to try again? 20, you say? Yeah. How big must force E be? Because it doesn't mention any unbalanced force vertically, so we'll assume the net force vertically is zero. Good. Matt, how big must force G be? Yeah. How big must force F be compared to force H? And so I'm going to go equals H, and I'm going to go equals F. Yep. Now, that means we're definitely accelerating to the right. Vertically, in the up-down direction, we could be at rest, or we could be moving in a straight line at a steady speed. I don't know. But I just know we're not accelerating vertically. So here's the gist of this whole... Oh, no, not yet, sorry. A couple more free body diagrams. A book is at rest on a tabletop. Your, your binders are a good example. A free body diagram for this situation looks like... So I'm going to encourage you, Peter, all of you, to draw your free body diagrams in a specific order. Students always want to jump to the mystery force, the punchline. And I'm going to say to you, if you wait, if you go systematically, often the punchline will become stupidly obvious. Let me show you what I mean. Draw your binder by representing it with a little dot like that. Peter, what are the forces acting on your binder? Get the obvious one. By the obvious one, I mean the force that holds us all to the earth. Starts with letter G. Draw an arrow pointing down, and let's call that FG for gravity. Is that all? It can't be. Here's how I know. Look at your binder, Peter. Is it sinking into the ground like quicksand? Is it flying into your like Superman? Is it accelerating? Then the forces must be, I'm looking for that starts letter B. So which way must there be an arrow pointing? Bigger, smaller, or the same size? Has to be. Eyeball it, but draw yours the same size as you drew gravity, and that's going to be the table, F table, pushing up. I know that has to be there from Newton's laws. If it wasn't, then that object would be sinking into the ground like quicksand. Or honestly, if it wasn't, if all there was was gravity, that's what free fall is. When in your free body diagram, the only force acting on you is gravity. That's a better definition of free fall. Example two. Jazz, what do you think FBD is in a brief for? Thank you for figuring that out on your own. Okay, I'm going to use that for the rest of the course and next year too, okay? So it says, draw a free body diagram for the following masses hanging from the rope. Okay, there's the mass. Jazz, what are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. At rest is not a force. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. By the obvious one, I mean that which holds us all to the earth or pulls us down. Yes. What else? Well, there is a force upwards because are we accelerating down? Are we accelerating up? What does it say in brackets, two words? If we're at rest, what's our acceleration exactly as a number? Which means forces must be, I'm looking for where that starts letter B. So I'm going to draw an arrow the same size as gravity pointing up. What force is that? It's the rope. We have a fancy schmancy name we give to the force from a rope. We call it tension. I'll use a capital letter T. Okay. Kenta, let's do a free body diagram for the second one here. 
What are the forces acting on it? Kenta, my friend, get the obvious one. I agree. What else? Is there a rope? Then there's tension, like you're feeling right now, but a different kind of tension. Bigger, smaller, or the same size as gravity? Which way are we accelerating? Up. So which way is the bigger force going to be? So bigger. I'll exaggerate it so it's obvious. This is going to allow us, Taya, from a good free body diagram to derive our equation unique to each situation and then start to analyze situations. Turn the page. One of the forces that you are most acquainted with is the force of gravity. This is the force that the Earth's mass exerts upon you. The force of gravity is calculated as follows. Everybody, F equals what, what? So the force of gravity is going to be mg, where g is 9.8. Not negative 9.8. We'll take care of the negative in our setup. We're just going to put the magnitude of 9.8. In fact, Ryan, i got to be honest. On these two free body diagrams, I never write fg. I put the mg formula there because it's two letters no matter what. So I figure I'll just put the equation there. So from now on, instead of writing F with a subscripted G for gravity, I'm just going to write mg. Hey, uh, what's another word for the force of gravity? It starts with letter W. It's on your green sheet. No, now. What's another word for the force of gravity? It starts with letter W. It's on your green sheet. Wait. No, now. Ryan hasn't got the joke yet. Someone will explain the joke to him, okay? Uh, Wait. W-E-I-G-H-T. And this is important for the rest of this year, for the rest of this course and Physics 12. If I'm talking about weight, I'm talking about something in newtons, not in kilograms. If I'm talking about something in kilograms, I'll use the word mass. If I say weight, I'm looking for an answer in newtons. In other words, take the mass and multiply it by 9.8 if you're on the Earth. What if you're not on the Earth? Good question. Says find, Example 3 says, find the weight of a 35 kilogram object A on the Earth, B on the Moon. Let's put a little A right there. Let's draw a line down the middle of the page. B right there. Derek's done yawning. Derek, what's Example 3 asking me to find? The weight, you say, that's going to be FG, but I want the weight on the Earth, so I'm going to go MG, and I'll put an E for Earth, and I also want the weight FG on the Moon, so I'll use MG Moon. I don't like that I'm using two M's, so I'm going to write the word Moon. Otherwise, I think those two M's might cancel, or I might do something dumb with them. Derek, my friend, what's the mass on the Earth? What's the mass on the Moon also? Your mass does not change whether you're near a black hole, whether you're on Jupiter, whether you're on the Moon, whether you're on the Earth. The mass is a constant thing that doesn't change. It's your inertia. It's the amount of protons and neutrons and electrons that make you up. What does change is the acceleration due to gravity. What's G on the Earth? Uh, 35 times 9, point it's going to be 350, take away 7. Is it 343? What about on the moon? What's G on the moon? The question told me, you don't need to memorize this. If I ever put you on the moon, I'll give you G on the moon if you need it. What was it? It's going to be 35 plus 21. It's going to be 55, 56? So when the astronauts were walking in their spacesuits on the moon, had their mass changed? No. Had their weight changed? That's why they're able to function. Peter, thank you. That's why they were able to function on the moon. Even though their mass hadn't changed, their weight had changed, and they were able to move around okay. Their spacesuits, I don't know the numbers in metric. I need to look it up. But their weight in Imperial on the Earth were about 300 pounds, 
Walking around with 300 pounds on the Earth is not very doable. But on the Moon, your weight is about one-sixth. So 50 pounds, yeah, they were, these guys were in pretty good shape. They could carry around 50 pounds of equipment without too much effort. Here it is. This is the point of today's lesson. This is how we're going to solve all force systems going forward. To solve situations involving forces, we're going to use a tug-of-war analogy. We're going to imagine that opposing forces are tugging on each other through the object. We're going to draw, uh, Jazz, what does FBD stand for? We're going to carefully label all the forces using Newton's first and second uh, third laws. We'll use our knowledge of physics to decide which is the strongest or winningest force. Which way are we accelerating? And then we're going to use the following template. It goes like this. Winner minus loser equals F net. That's the one that you'll commit to memory. You might be tempted to write it on your green sheet. Don't yet. We'll be doing this so often. Trust me, you'll have this in memory. Oh, 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 but where F net, what does F net equal from your green sheet? MA. So really what you're going to see me do is I'll go winner minus loser equals MA. And if you take physics 12 with me, you won't find anything beyond that. We'll be just getting more and more complicated situations with more forces, more winners, more losers. But they're either going to be in the winning direction, we'll make them positive. If they're in the losing direction, we'll put a minus sign in front of them, make them negative, and that's going to equal MA. Let me show you an example. Example four. Suppose the box is resting on ice and the following forces are acting on it. Part A says, add any forces that you think are miss missing. Okay. What are the forces acting on this object? Get the obvious one. Which way? Draw an arrow pointing down. And you can label that MG. Is this object sinking into the ice like quicksand? Is it flying into the air like Superman? So that means vertically the forces must be, I'm looking for where it starts, letter B. So which way do I need to draw another arrow? Pointing bigger, smaller, or the same size as MG? Eyeball it on your diagram. Mine's about like that. And that's going to be the ice pushing up. Again, you're not used to inanimate objects applying a force. They have to be all the time. Okay. B asks... How fast will it accelerate? What direction will this accelerate? Look at the picture. Taya, what direction must this accelerate? I think you're correct. Loud and proud. What direction am I going to pick to be the winner? Same answer. So you ready? Here's my equation. Winner minus loser equals MA. We're not going to write that step out anymore, but we did just once. Taya, which force is winning? Who's winning? More specific as a number exactly? Who's the loser? <gasps> Kenta, did you see? Did you see? I said, who's the loser? And she looked at you. Oh. Wow. Oh, it is on. Wow. Wow. Fine. Who's the losing force? What does winner minus loser always equal? M.A. Sean, what does B want me to find? Look up, kiddo. What does B want me to find? How will I get the A by itself? Sean's theorem. How will I get the A by itself? Look at my equation that I've written right here. How will I get the A by itself? How will I move the M over? Here's my equation. How will I get the A by itself? How will I move the M over? What's the M doing to the A? 
So what's the M? It's multiplying. So how I move the A over? How I move the M over? Sean, how I move the M over? So everybody, if you want to, you can go like this and do that, and I'll figure out what you were getting at. You don't have to rewrite the entire line if you don't need to. Boy, that was painful. Should have named it after someone else, Mr. Duick. We're good. So, Taya, it's going to be 14, take away 6, divided by, Taya, what's M? How'd you get that? Look at the picture. Don't forget to look at the picture, okay? Uh, brackets around the top, I think. What'd you get? 2.67. <coughs> Is that right? Units, it's an acceleration. Meters per second squared is correct. Kilograms. Okay. By the way, in this question, I gave you both forces and I said find A. I would also have no problem giving you one force. A, find the missing force. Like uh, example five. Example 5 says, suppose the box below is sitting on a table and accelerating to the left at 3.2 meters per second squared. A says, add any forces you think are missing. Well, there's at least one missing. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Which way? Is this box sinking to the table like quicksand? Is it flying to like Superman? Then vertically, forces must be balanced. So I know there's another force here. I'll call that F. Table, it's about the same size as mg. What direction are we accelerating according to this picture? What direction is going to be the winning direction then? Same answer. Left. Who's winning? Okay. They want me to find the force that Abe is pulling. You know what? I'm going to use a capital F for force and then an A for Abe, and I'll use FB for Billy. So I'm going to go like this. Who's winning? FA minus who's losing? FB. What's that always going to equal? What, what? MA. Matt, what do they want me to find in part B? It's okay, you got it. If Billy is pulling to the right with 24 newtons of force, comma, what are they asking me to find? More specific, just read me the phrase starting with the word how. Hard is. Which of these is how hard Abe is pulling? Help me out, folks. F.A. Right? A for A, B for Billy. So I want to get the F.A. by itself. Okay, everyone. How would I get the F.A. by itself? How will I move the F.B. over? This is why I did so much formula manipulation, because I can't come up with every equation in this unit. You're going to have to rewrite stuff. I agree with you. I'm going to plus this over to that side, and I'll get F.A. equals M.A. plus F. Billy. It's going to be M5 times A 3.2 plus 24. I did this in my head because 5 times 3.2 is 16. 16 plus 24. I think it's going to work out to 40 dead even, I think. Okay. By the way, what direction did we let be positive here? Backwards. Why? Because it made the math easier. So unlike free fall, where down was always negative and up was always positive and forward was always positive and backwards was always negative, we're going to chuck that. We're going to be more advanced. We're going to say, let positive be what makes the math be easiest. And 99.9% .9 of the time, that's going to be whichever direction you're accelerating. Who's winning? It's going to be way easier. Next page over. 
I like example six. I like example six. Example six is the next question. Jazz and Deep, what's example six asking me to find? You know this is a good job for? A free body diagram. Now, how do I know that? You ready? Here's your mental trigger. What are they asking me to find? That's one force. Is there also another force in this situation that I'm going to have to deal with? The obvious one. Is there more than one force? Then it's usually going to be a good job for a free body diagram. Okay? So I'll represent the mass with a dot. What are the forces acting on it, Jazz and Deep? Get the obvious one. Good. What else? Acceleration is not a force. I'm going to gently go smack you on the hand and say, no, 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 no. What direction, though, is the acceleration? I'm looking upwards. What direction must there be a larger arrow pointing? Upwards. I know there's a force. I'll exaggerate it that way. What force is pulling up? You're feeling it right now, a little tension, different kind of tension. Tension. Okay? Acceleration doesn't show up on my free body diagram. It's not a force. What shows up on my free body diagrams? Forces. In Newtons. Who's winning? Who's the loser? <gasps> Noah, did you see? I said, who's the loser? And he looked at you. Bonson Park, 3 o'clock. If I'm not there, just start without me. You can so take him. I mean, look. <laughs> okay, fine. Who's the winning force? Tension. Who's the losing force? Minus mg. What does winner minus loser always equal? What, what? Oh, by the way, I could have told you the tension and you could find the acceleration. We'd use Sean's theorem, divide by m. Here, they're asking me to find the tension. Fine, get the t by itself. Yep, why add? Because right now it's being minused on that side. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's going to be ma plus mg. What's m? What's a? 2. What's m? 12 again. What's g? Not negative 9.8. Look up, by the way. Can you see where the negative 9.8 was? It was hidden right. There's the negative. I took care of that in my winner minus loser stick. If I needed it to be negative, there it was. But sometimes I'll let down be positive because it makes the math work out easier. What do you get? Do this one in your head, Mr. D well, maybe. Should be able to. It's going to be 120 take away 2.4. It's going to be 117.6 plus 24. 117.6. 137.6. Uh, 151.6? 41.6. Carry to one wrong, do it. 141.6? Yeah. Units, it's a force. Okay. Okay. I can do this. Example 7, Dave, and what are they asking me to find? This is a job for a free body diagram. Because tension is one force. I know there's gravity. More than one force. I probably want to figure out how they're related. So I'll represent the mass with a dot. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Which way? What else? Which way? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as gravity? And how do I know? Why must it be smaller? Yeah, this is what Newton's first allows us to say. If you're accelerating down, that has to be the direction of the unbalanced force, which means you might have some force up, but you don't have enough to cancel out gravity. Who's winning? Who's losing? Equals? M G minus T equals what what? What are we trying to find? 
Everyone look up. Here's, once you've written down this equation, here's a clever little trick. What's right in front of the T that I don't like? The negative. So I'm going to do two steps at once. Look up. I'll wait till you're done. Okay? Look up. I'll wait till everyone's looking up. Look up. I'm going to plus the tension to this side, and at the same time, I'm going to minus the MA to this side. And here's what's going to happen. The MG drops down. There's going to be a minus MA. That equals tension. Write that down. With the arrows, please. With the red arrows. Do you notice it kind of looks like the MA and the T just swap places? I'd been doing this for a while, and about five years ago, one of my students nicknamed this the swappy dance. Swappy dance is what you do when what you're trying to get by itself has a minus sign in front of it. We could have minus the mg over and then divided everything by negative one. <laughs> Don't do that. Do yourself a favor. Make it positive. Do a swappy dance. Get the, the thing that you want by itself to the other side by plussing it over. Move everything else over to this side. Because now... What was M? 12, G, 9.8, minus 12, times 4.2. What do you get? Sixty-seven point two. Anybody else? Six seven point two units. It's a force. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Quickly, buddy. I like example eight. I like example eight. Example eight is a nice question. Okay. Cameron, what's example eight asking me to find? Tension. You're feeling a little right now. Uh, okay. And is there also gravity more than one force? This is a job for a free body diagram. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Gravity. What else? Tension. Bigger, smaller, or the same size as gravity? And how do I know? Convince me. What does A equal? What are the units for acceleration? Meters per second what? Do I need to get you a Verizon job application? I can. By, by, by the way, you may, I, I set this one up on purpose and I apologize. I set you up. This is kind of a classic mistake. Kids see the 3.8 and they say, oh, it must be accelerating. They see the word up. Oh, it must be accelerating. What's the two word phrase that's the key to doing this question? This is why I like this question. I like this question. What's the two word phrase we should have underlined? See, what we should have done, Cameron, was this. Because if you're at a constant speed, What's your acceleration, Cameron, exactly as a number? I think you're loud and proud. Yeah, you know what? I can say that A is zero. Well, if A is zero, you know what that means? Forces are, I'm looking for a word that starts with letter B. So, am I going to draw the arrow pointing up bigger, smaller, or the same size? Yes. Okay. I have a lot of students don't write this next bit down. Apparently, I need to say this three times because I only said it twice last class and Nick still kept writing it down. So don't write this down. That's the second time. Don't write this down. That's the third time. I'm going to show you something wrong. A lot of students see the word up and they go, oh, tension must be winning. Gravity must be losing equals MA. Oh, it wants me to get the T by itself. I'll just plus that over. And they go like this. And then, oh, what's the mass? 
uh, 12. What's A? Uh, uh, it must be the 3.8, even though I've taught you your units. I'll see kids put that there, and I will go cray-cray if you do that. In an Icelandic teacher kind of a way, I'll make some dumb Verizon joke. Instead, constant speed, A is zero. Forces are what? Who's winning? It's a tie. How would that turn into an equation? Write that down. It's a tie. What's M? From the picture? Yeah. Don't forget to look at the picture. G, 9.8. Not negative, I'm kind of calculating tension, which is pointing up. I'm not going to put the negatives in in this unit. Uh, I can do that in my head. 12 times 9, it's going to be 120, take away 2.4. It's going to be 118, 117.6, I think. Yeah. Okay. I guarantee there will be a question in your future where it's constant speed, but I give you a velocity and a direction just to tempt you to turn it into an acceleration because you're not paying attention. We'll pause with this one. We'll finish with this one. Ooh. Okay. Brennan, what's example nine want me to find? Acceleration. Do you see a VI or a VF? or a D, or a T. I'm not using kinematics. You know what? They told me core tension, that's one force. Is there another force in this question? The obvious one. Gravity, this is a job for a free body diagram. You see that little chain of reasoning I did? So here we go. What are the forces acting on this object? Get the obvious one. Yeah. Which way? Yeah. What else? Uh, Bigger, smaller, or the same size as MG? You know what? Right now in your brain, you know how in a commercial when something grinds to a stop, you hear the sound of a record needle being dragged across the record? You should be hearing that scream because I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Get your calculators out, everybody. How big is tension as a number exactly? 98 newtons. Can you calculate mg? Can you on your calculator without writing anything down? Just go 12 times 9.8? 117.6. Which one is bigger, gravity or tension? Which one is winning, gravity or tension? Which way is it accelerating, up or down? Which way am I going to draw a longer arrow, up or down? So draw tension smaller. Okay. Who's winning? Who's losing? What's winner minus loser always equal? M.A. Sean, what are we trying to find in example nine? How will I get the A by itself? In this case, there's no F. How will I get the A by itself? Divide the M over, if we generalize it, right? Okay. It's going to be M, 12 times 9.8 minus 98 divided by 12. By the way, there is a built-in error check. Look up, because we're finding an acceleration. Suppose I cut the rope. What's the maximum the acceleration could be in free fall? Suppose I cut the rope. What's the maximum this acceleration could be in free fall? 9.8. I... It's not in free fall. Tension slowing it down. I guarantee you're going to get a magnitude less than 9.8. I don't know what, but there's a bit of a built-in error check if you make a typo. I know in this particular case, I have to get smaller than 9.8. Brennan, what'd you get? One point six three meters per second squared. If you want to start a little bit of the homework, 
on a separate piece of paper, you can try number one and number two, but I'm also willing to bet you might have some trouble because I haven't practiced this enough with you. When you wrap your brain around this, this is a very, very, very handy tool. But first, I'm going to pause the video here.